So it should be in line with the photos of the. You guys added the line, right? <coughs> the file is just so yes. big that it's taken. If you keep going, it may be right after the lighting. This is the photometric plan that was lots. done. Correct. We're using all high uh, energy efficient LED lighting, so you'll have cutoffs on this, so the lighting will, be, will meet all the code requirements for the village. And do those have more of a downdraft? Absolutely, light absolutely. So and they're all wash. LED inside and out of this whole, whole project. We're very energy conscious. We're trying to do our part in being conservative of uh, and greening the, and using the green codes. But there's um, less all, wash. There, here it comes. There we go. There we go. There's, there finally is the plan. So you'll see on this plan that we've got the retail store up on the corner with the drive through coming around it, the car wash to the east of this. Directly to the east of the car wash is a drive that would connect the front driveway down to Adams. That was a way of providing access from Adams up to our, our property as well. Originally, there was a connection from the fueling area behind or to Please the south of the pointer. retail store onto that side drive that no longer exists. The intent that would be to have any truck traffic come off of Gordon, go through the fueling area, go back onto Gordon. Excuse me a moment. We have a pointer that might make it easier okay, for us sure. to follow. Thank you. Assuming I can operate it. <laughs> okay. So what we have here is the entrance off of Gordon coming in <clears throat> where cars can go up into the fueling area here. Cars can also then go back out onto Route 30 or come back down to Adams. Truck fueling now, for anyone who comes in with the truck, will pull in here, come around, fuel up, and then go back out onto Gordon. They will not come onto the side or, uh, or back down onto Adams. We'll be putting this fence, eight foot high fence, along the southern edge of our property, along with landscaping, and potentially a mound, depending upon if we can meet the regulations for the landscape ordinance. So we're trying to buffer the residents down here from the activity on our property and also limit the traffic. We believe that most of the automobile, automobile, automobile traffic will be coming off 30 or out of the subdivision in here, coming back onto Gordon or back out onto Route 30 from this common right-in, right-access for the entire development. So that we'll probably have minimal traffic here, but any traffic that is there will be for, for automobiles only. Brian, our civil engineer here, is here tonight to discuss any engineering issues we may have. I'm also available to answer any questions you may have regarding the architecture, the functions of the buildings. There's always questions regarding the fueling system in the state fire marshal, uh, the, the uh, wastewater that comes out of the car wash and how it is treated and, and it goes into your system. Uh, we're able to answer any of these questions that may come up from either you or from the residents. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and bring Brian up next to give a brief description of the uh, civil engineering. Quick question. Is this a 24-hour facility? The convenience store will be 24 hours. The car wash will not be. And, there can be, and the Dunkin' Donuts drive through I, will have limitations on when it will be open. I don't know quite what those are. Uh, the owner's here tonight. He can also talk a little bit about those hours. Um, but the car wash typically be somewhere in the area of, of 7 a.m. to 10. But in the but the community store would be 24 hours as most community stores are. Can you just explain what's, you were describing how the trucks would go around. What's in between all that? Is that green space or is that a detention area? So yeah, what we have here is we have a small detention area. This is actually uh, some of the, most of the detention is taken care of off-site, but this detention area is for the quality of water so that any of the storm water uh, runoff that comes off into that is, is, I'll let Brian describe it, but it's kind of a treatment before it goes into the storm water. Okay. So what you have here, though, is you have a fence and landscaping along the southern edge. We'll take it f as far over to the driveway as we can and far over here as the code will allow us. But the trucks then, when they pull in now, will come in pull around here, they'll stop, get fuel up, and then go back out and overall the majority of them will be on Route 30, but there'll be some delivery trucks and some trucks may have business in this area, but we don't really service over the road trucks. They're, it's not an advantage to them to fuel up with us. They typically get better deals elsewhere. This is more for local trucks. All those people, a lot of local businessmen who have diesel trucks, <coughs> you know, contractors, landscapers, delivery people, uh, that do need fuel and have a difficult time finding it or 
if they do try to fuel up and go into the gas area, uh, as the one by my house does, there's a conflict between the, the cars and the trucks, and it never works well. So a lot of times they'll even avoid it, or we don't want any issues between the two as far as safety. Other questions before I let Brian come up? Is there a landscape plan for your new site plan? N no, we did not have time. This Actually, we created this plan after last week's meeting, which was last Thursday. So we came, Brian and I came together, we worked on this plan. Actually, it was a week ago Thursday, right? right. Yeah. Right. And we came with this plan and redeveloped this plan. We can certainly update our landscape plan accordingly. And we're very happy to, with the, in regards to the fence and landscaping down here, we're very happy to go way overboard. My name is Brian Hertz from MG2A. We were the civil engineer and the land surveyor that we, has been working on the project. Um, Scott mentioned the stormwater detention. He's correct that the stormwater detention is provided for the site to the south as part of the original Blackberry Crossings development. Um, there's that small area towards the south end between the fence and the, the truck fueling area there. That is a stormwater attenuation basin. So. There's a storm sewer that is stubbed across Adam Avenue, I believe it continues south, but it's stubbed into the property and there would be a pipe that would be extended over to that small basin area and then that collects water until the time that the storm sewer is able to convey those flows downstream into the detention pond. But it also acts as a water quality feature because it's filtering the water and it's providing an area for sediment to settle out prior to you know being sent down to the stormwater detention pond as far as sanitary sewer goes there's an existing sanitary sewer that is located at the far eastern end of the project so we would have to extend sanitary sewer down to the just south of about where the right in right out is proposed um Water, water is available on the site. There's an existing water main on Adam Avenue. I believe there's an existing water main on uh, Gordon Road also. So that kind of covers the, the three main utilities. If you have any questions, specific questions, I'd be happy to answer those. All right. And you ran, and I'm, pardon me if you just said this, but for the, for the diesel, you ran uh, auto turn for that? they can actually make that turn around right we've got truck turning templates that okay we, yeah that's what i figured all right all right hi um i'm len McHenry. i'm the owner of gas and wash we currently own and operate nine locations um i've been in the business my whole life um these um I've heard complaints about, um, you know, the, the neighborhoods uh, in several villages and that. But to me, it's amazing how quiet these places really are, um, especially with the, the fence in the back. Uh, you know, if you maybe be a good idea just to come out to any of our facilities and just stand there. The cars, you know, a car that comes in, um, you know, just pull just they just pull in I mean you, you really don't you really don't hear the vehicles um, I don't know what our measurement is from the fuel the the gas islands to the houses there but uh, it looks like it's 400 plus feet uh, I've seen a sound study do, done before road noises higher than any noise that we're gonna that we're gonna have inside there with all the regulations today by the state and the government from underground storage tanks and lighting and IDOT permits for driveways, uh, there's no problem with any of that. All that is, all that's taken care of. Um, I look at ourselves as a neighborhood business. These are not franchised. We operate them ourselves. We hire local people. Uh, I think we have a pretty nice uh, small chain of stores um, with just local people. Um, a typical store like this generates in the range of about $400,000 a year to the, to the villages, and we would employ uh, about 60 people in, the, in this location. So 
if we're looking for uh, people that are easy to work with, um, if you guys are pro-business, this is uh, a nice fit up on uh, a major highway that pretty much goes cross country. And uh, I think we're, we've made some good changes uh, to the neighbors there and hopefully uh, everything uh, works out here for us. So thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Your, uh, your closest stations you have now, Shorewood, Plainfield, I understand somewhere around there? Shorewood, Plainfield, Mokina, okay. um, Tinley Park, Joliet, oh, wow. Kankakee, New Lenox. So which one's the, I guess Plainfield would probably be our closest. Where's that one located? Um, Drowden and Route 126. Okay. Okay, um, I think I, I had just one other question then. I think, I'm sure there's somebody here that wants to address the board on this. Um, just a quick question, on the access to US Route 30, what's the status of that and would you move forward with the project if you didn't get either or both of those? The right in, right out on Route 30, there's a, uh, well, Route 30 is uh, access control through this stretch, but there is a, a uh, access control rights that were reacquired 10, 12, 14 years ago for the right in, right out location. Um, the right in that we had shown there, that was labeled as a potential right in. Mm -hmm. It's doubtful that IDOT would, uh, you know, entertain any access to that spot. I don't believe that the right in is a critical item. It's something we would like to have, mm -hmm. but I think IDOT's going to push back on that quite a bit. They have to give us access. They have to give us access at the right in, right out. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Did the other access point, right in, right out, is that that one you will have one? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're, okay. Did you buy both lots, one and two, as you've seen up there? No, just the uh, first slot. Just the first slot. Correct. Okay. And mm -hmm. with the potential widening of Route 30, because it's <coughs> on the books to, you know, someday um, get widened, how does that negatively or positively impact your plan? The existing right of way is is very wide through through this frontage, so all of the improvements that are being considered are contained within that right of way. It doesn't affect us at all. Okay. Uh, have we have we seen a site plan for? I guess is this a sub? This is a subdivision of this lot, or you just bought one lot? Is the lot line moving? And have we seen a site plan for the remaining two point six but acres? The, the GLR Ventures, which is mentioned in the, on the yeah. application, has filed a petition to subdivide the entire piece into two parcels. Mm -hmm. We would be parcel one. Parcel two is the remaining property okay. uh, to the east. And have we seen a site plan for? Parcel two? No. We think that a two acre, 2.6 acre lot would be sufficient for future business development? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. I was going to talk to you about that. We, um, my name is Gary Datro. I'm part of uh, the owner of this land that we're talking about presenting to bring in for development. Um, we worked really hard to get gas and wash to Montgomery. Just, um, I just want to let you guys know in the situation with lot number two, we have spoke to other restaurants and we're considering subdividing lot two into a family daycare. Uh, we reached out to KLA and we reached out to some other uh, monastery schools and they showed some interest. The problem is right now is that we really need gas and wash to start this development so we can get the small restaurants and small business into lot two, into our subdivided lot. And um, we do have interest in with other restaurants and KLA would like to go into lot two okay. as well. So, awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, does staff have anything else to add at this point? No, sir. Okay, if you guys want to take a seat, and then I'll invite, if uh, just show of hands, who's a member of the public that might want to speak on this? 
just to see how, okay. And I'm, I'm very open to allowing everybody their opportunity to speak, but just be cognizant of the time. And, and, uh, um, and if somebody's already made your point, just reiterate that when you get up here. So with that, uh, don't forget to uh, sign your name in, to sign in. And um, we're happy to hear your concerns and your questions. So what you're saying is ditto is an acceptable response at some point. You yeah, as short okay. as that, yes. Good evening. My name is Victoria Laxton, and I live in Foxmoor. So my home is on the north side of Highway 30, directly across from this proposal. <clears throat> There's nothing emotional, emotional about why I don't want this in this intersection. Um, my house is the third from the corner where this intersection is. This is a dangerous intersection. It's 55 miles an hour here. There's no stops between Highway 47 and 30 and Gordon Road. So it's 55 miles an hour completely, and that's the minimum speed limit. So we hear all night and all day long, tractor trailers coming up and down Highway 30, and when they're running the stop light, which they do all the time, they honk their horn telling people they're running the stop light. Cars and trucks do it all day long. This is gonna be a place where there's gonna be a fatality Without a gas station, it's going to happen here. So the minimum speed limit is 55. What do you think they're doing when they're running a, a, a light there? And that's where there's going to be an entrance to this gas station. I'm not opposed to there being some kind of business or, you know, I'm not opposed to us getting businesses in this, in this uh, area. But this is not, a gas station isn't what we need in a residential area in the middle of this neighborhood. Um, where they're proposed for their, uh, the gas station part of it, the gas fill up, the headlights would shine directly into the back of our home. So when we're sitting out on the backside in, in our living room watching TV at night, anybody filling up all those headlights pulling into that gas station pumping gas are going to shine into the back of my house while I'm watching TV or into our kitchen or when we're sitting out on our deck, which is elevated at the back of our house in the summertime or sitting in the backyard with our neighbors, all those lights are gonna be shining on, on us while we're sitting in our backyard. How much enjoyment do you think we're gonna get out of that? I'm talking about quality of our life, not nothing emotional about this. This is quality of life, not only to say, what's this gonna to do to our value of our property? So, you know, while I don't say there shouldn't something go in these lots, it's a big property, it's a big parcel. That's great, I'd love to see something go in here. There's a gas station less than two miles at Jericho and 47. There's a car wash that just opened last year on Orchard Road that's less than two miles away. There's a big gas station, a Speedway, that just opened across from Walmart less than two miles away. There's another one just north on Orchard Road that's less than two miles away. I don't see the need for this gas station in this location in a neighborhood, in, in between multiple subdivisions in a residential area. So again, nothing emotional about this. Okay. Thank you. And did you, did you state your name? My name is Victoria Laxton. Okay. I live in Foxmoor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time it. and consideration. Thank you. Uh, one question that I would ask for uh, staff would be, and I, I don't mean, I'm not implying that Route 30 is being widened anytime soon, but I know the phase one is, is nearing completion. On the north side of, I guess on the south side of Foxmoor and Fairfield, will there be sound wall around, uh, along that whole stretch? I can't remember. You know, I'd have to check to be certain, but I believe that it was, um, it was voted to be approved at that location. Okay. Okay. Good evening. My name's Todd DeLugas. Um, I live east of there at a third house. It's going to be a third house up from Adam on Chad Court. Um, my concern is, you know, I got several articles about uh, health safety, but uh, 
you know, summer nights, I'm gonna have light shining in my back windows. I'm gonna have gas fumes come in my way. You know, and the fields are wide open, so you know, all the fumes from the gas pumps and the cars are gonna blow into my house, and uh, you know, I won't be able to keep my windows open. Um, Adam's already a mess. You, know, you got cars drag, drag racing down the street right now. Um, this is just gonna make it worse by having a gas station there, and then uh, our home value is gonna drop, and no one's gonna want to move. Move, and then you got a big gas station in your backyard. You know, so, and you know, many of us have young kids over there, and like I said, I got articles stating that you know, childhood cancer, uh, respiratory illnesses, and all that are results of gas stations being in neighborhoods, and like. Uh, the lady before me said, you know, there's several gas stations right around the area, so. Okay. So I, 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 I beg you guys not to approve this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. I already did, yes. Um, hi, my name is Valerie Grondin. Um, I live in Montgomery Crossing West. I could show you a picture of my house. It's not too far from where your proposed gas station and car wash is. I've lived in this community for a long time. I bought a house um, where um, the last lady was Victoria. I lived in Foxmoor for several years because I could afford to live here. My brother lives nearby. My brother lived in Montgomery for a long time. I have to put up with high tension lines, which may or may not cause leukemia. My nephew was diagnosed with leukemia four years ago, living in Montgomery. Can I prove that? No. Big businesses are very um, clever at putting their money towards not proving such things. I have to deal with a um, water tower. I have to deal with banks overpricing houses so that my house value has dropped $50,000 since I bought it. And now you want to put in a gas station and a car wash on the corner? Well, I'd like to share with you that when I lived next door to a car repair shop, and the last gentleman did say something about fumes, the car repair shop that I live next door to, they didn't run cars all the time. But I couldn't leave my windows open at all because of the fumes from the repair shop. Now, I don't live as close as the gentleman off of Adams does to that, but it concerns me. The other thing that concerns me is that while over the last 15, 20 years, regulations and EPA has improved, uh, this current administration doesn't care so much for the EPA. And I will say that um, I have a master's degree in biology. And so I'm coming from a point of my degree was in water resources. And there is no 100% certainty that the gas station tanks that are going to be underground that are not going to leach into the water system. We have Blackberry Crossing Watershed. There's already two gas stations that I was against that have already been put in. As the other lady said, I'll say ditto. There's also the Orchard Road stop that's a gas station and a car wash there as well. When I lived in Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Turnpike had a gas station that was at the Oasis, okay? And it took years to determine, but the gas station that was at that Turnpike Oasis leached hazardous chemicals into the water of the homes nearby. And I wish that you could see the fact that their houses not only had to have reverse osmosis for their drinking water, they had to have the entire wall of their basement had to have reverse osmosis for their entire water. They couldn't shower there. They couldn't use the water to cook. And I'm not saying this to be, what do you call it, uh, dramatic, because it's the truth. It happened there. There are tons of hazardous waste sites across um, the United States that the EPA is still trying to clean up. And I don't feel that, you know, for, um, meters of, um, what do you call it, four meters of clay uh, surrounding them is going to not have that leach out. So I'm terribly against doing this. I have a house here. I'm going to have enough trouble reselling it. My property values are going to go down dramatically if I have to deal with a gas station less than a mile from my house. Never mind. I am only able to water my lawn, my trees, my shrubs, shrubs that the builder put in. 
I water your trees for you on the parkway, and I have six because I have a corner lot, and now I have to worry about the amount of water that is being consumed nearby, depleting the watershed for another water restriction, because I have to worry about the amount of water that I use. What about the amount of water that he is going to use in his business there? What about my property values? I don't have kids going to school here, so where are my taxes going? When is my voice going to be heard in this? So thank you for listening. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jason Hobb, and I live in Huntington Chase, about a mile south of this um, site, proposed site, <clears throat> south on Gordon. And I wanted to uh, just remind everyone here of a couple positives that would come from this uh, proposed um, gas and wash location. I wanted to remind everyone about the convenience factor that it will bring to the residents of Montgomery, as well as the revenue that they would gain from the um, traffic that passes um, on this high traffic uh, route. I also wanted to um, uh, reinforce the idea of additional business opportunities that would come in the adjacent lot and lot two, um, and the additional uh, long-term economic effects that would have for this this um, village. And then my last point that I want to, uh, just want to make it brief. Um, my last point is I highly re recommend that everyone go look at the gas and wash location at Drowden and Route 126. <coughs> And you'll probably be surprised that the quality of the establishment, it's probably going to be one of the nicest um, gas stations that you've visited in your life. Um, and those are the points I wanted to make. Thanks, JC. <clears throat> My name is Tom Betzinger. I live at 3153 Buchanan Lane in Montgomery. Uh, there's no doubt that the quality of, of the petitioner's work and presentation um, in site plan. However, um, the zoning for that parcel is supposed to be low impact for the residents. I think it's difficult to imagine higher impact use at that site than a 24-hour gas station. Um, I live far enough in Blackberry Crossing West where this is not a genuine inconvenience to me. However, um, I believe it is a genuine inconvenience to the folks across the street, the folks near Adams, and the folks who, who recreate around that area. Um, traveling on 30 daily, as many of us do, <laughs> the road goes fast. It's, it's a little sketchy sometimes. Um, Adding this type of business in an area where it is not an intended use, um, I think would be a mistake. Um, the petitioner is not a bad corporation. They put very good information together. Um, at the plan commission meeting and tonight, I think you'll hear a lot of residents caring loudly about what happens in their neighborhood, um, in their community. And for me, uh, this is just an unintended use. Um, we'd love to see something go in this parcel. I'm not a NIMBY. It's not, don't build it near me. Um, but 24-hour gas station and on that location at that intersection uh, would seem to me to be a, a mistake. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Hi, my name is Nick Platos, and I live in Blackberry Crossing West. Um, I won't echo what everybody else said, uh, but what um, is important is the purpose of the zoning of this, this 
spot of land. What's interesting is the other uh, subdivision, uh, uh, the developer said that they want to put in a, uh, a restaurant. No restaurant wants to be right next to a gas station, and nobody wants to live right next to a gas station. The difference between the gas station in this location and the one on 126 in Drawden is we didn't choose to live by a gas station. The development that will come closer to the gas station on 126 and Drawden, those people will be able to choose, do I want to live by a gas station or not? This doesn't serve the community. And by uh, denying uh, this proposal, it's not anti-business. By granting it, it's anti-common sense planning. I ask that you uh, uh, take the recommendations of the Zoning Commission and deny this petition. Thanks, Nick. Good evening. My name is Amy Brito. This is my husband, Gary Brito. We live um, directly across the street from Adam Avenue, and I do appreciate um, the gentleman uh, from the petition putting in that really nice wall there. But to be honest with you, our association is one in which we share that common area on the other side of Adam Avenue. Our children are playing there. There are no fences. And while that fence is very nice to go up there, it is not going to block the smell. It's not going to block the the noise and the lights that are going to shine into our children's windows at night. And while we moved to this community, and while I, I know that this is gonna sound some, some emotion in it, but we moved here to Montgomery from DuPage County because we wanted this life. And, and the last gentleman was absolutely correct. We chose this because we love this, this town that we live in and this ability to have a, a, a a quiet home with our children, away from the, the noise and pollution. And it isn't going to be this 24 hours, and yes, we can shut off the, we can shut off the uh, car wash at 10 o'clock, but imagine on a summer night knowing that this is a time we could be spending with our family outside, but those vacuums are on until 10 o'clock at night. My children go to bed at 8 o'clock at night. So I can tell you that while this is nice and bringing money to our community and helping our village is important, it is going to destroy what we enjoy about living here in Montgomery. And just like the previous owners have talked about, we bought our home in 2005. And so, as you all know, we paid a premium for that, and a premium that we haven't made up yet. And so while we would love to stay here in Montgomery, we're in a situation where our backyard will be this gas station. And there will be no other choice for us but to endure this life that we no longer enjoy. And so I'd really hope that the board considers, while we appreciate business, and we would love nothing more than to have those restaurants you guys were talking about and, and those businesses be close to our home, to be able to get a cup of coffee in the morning on the corner would be lovely. But this is not the cup of coffee I want to drink. That pollution is not what I want for my children. And it is really up to all of you to consider that before you say yes to this project and decide if that money for our village is worth our children. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, one question, the, the common area that we're talking about, is that the common area that's at the corner of Adam and Gordon, the north, I guess it would be the southeast corner? Yes. OK. Yes. That is our backyard. Could we clarify how? much distance really is between the proposed facility and their home? Is it yes. a drawing that reflects Yeah, I can that? see the dimension to it, but it's kind of obscured by the wall. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Earlier in the packet, there's a different, without yeah. the wall. OK, well, we figured that out. Is there any other member of the public that wants to address the board?
Uh, my name is Lance Thompson. I'll keep this short. Um, we bought our house right around the same time they did in 2005. So we've lived in Montgomery for quite a while now. Um, like I said, I'm not going to rehash anything. My biggest concerns are the bike path that goes along the west side of this development. Uh, my son and his friends, they'll ride their bikes up that way. They'll walk across the way to go fishing. And semis turning in there on, off of Gordon Road, my kid will never be able to go do that anymore. That's an impact to us. Um, it's definitely not low risk. The other thing is when they're talking about an eight foot wall, I do work in the logistics industry, and most trucks require at least 13 feet five inches for clearance. So exhaust will escape over the top of that wall if a semi does go in there. They, it will be taller than that wall when it's driving around. Um, that's just the biggest thing. It's just like, if they were building this thing on further down on 30 or 47, I would be all for it. I would go there. I would go there and fill up all the time. But this is a this is a residential area. It's not meant for a gas station. And if the gentleman that was presenting before, I think his name was Mr. Vickers. Was that his name? Yeah, Mick Vickers. If he can't get restaurants down on Orchard and 30, I don't know how they're going to get restaurants there. <clears throat> I don't want to cut anybody off. Is there anybody else that felt like feels like their position hasn't been uh, articulated? I'd like to clarify one more point. I thought I heard that there will not likely be semi traffic in this facility other than perhaps to fill the tanks. It's not designed for semi trucks. No, actually, that's not what we said. What I was trying to explain is that most of our truck traffic will be smaller trucks. We have the over-the-road truck to pull in here, but those guys typically don't want to fuel up in our spot because they get better pricing elsewhere. We have diesel that's being sold here. Like most gas stations, you typically sell it out at the front islands. But there's a big conflict with that when trucks are pulling in with trailers, uh, dump trucks, delivery trucks, so forth. So we try to separate the two for safety. So most of our... our Diesel sales will be local people. Uh, we don't really cater to the overroad trucks, and overroad trucks are going to be up on the tollway. They're going to be going elsewhere, and they get if they're coming out of state, they're filling up before they get in the state of Illinois. Uh, but if they are fueling up in this area, they're going to have uh, cards with other uh, uh, fueling areas. They're not going to fuel up here. Most of the overroad trucks won't bother with us. They don't want to. It's not convenient for them anyway. If you wouldn't mind, I'd want to address a couple of the points that were brought up, uh, just to clarify. In regards to the underground tanks, there were huge issues with those 40, 50 years ago. The state Superfund came in to clean up those sites. But since then, there's huge regulations that have been put in place as well. All the underground tanks now, they're not metal anymore, typically they're fiberglass, and they're double walled. And the point of that is, if there is a leak out of one of the tanks or one of the lines of the dispensers, there's sensors in that space between the two tanks. It's sensed immediately, it's shut down, a report's filed, and it's repaired. So that there won't be a possibility of it leaking the ground because it's already leaked into one, it's gonna be sensed immediately. In regards to the water usage, uh, the car wash uses approximately 25 gallons per car, and part of that then is recycled. So it, it, it's about equivalent to a typical 10 minute shower. And with teenage daughters, I wish I had those shorter showers. But the, it's much more efficient than car washes used to be in regards to the water usage. The wastewater coming out of that uh, car wash now will go through what we call as an oil separator. It's a separator that, that takes all the fluids that might be washed off of a car and separates them so they don't go into the public system. That triple basin that will be outside will be cleaned out periodically for all the things that are inside of it. The intent is that we are buffering the city's system from the wastewater coming out of the car wash and it'll be taken care of separately. If there's any other questions you need answered, we're all here available for you. I have a question. Yes. What's the height of the canopy? I didn't see that in the packet. Uh, I, typical height of canopy clearance is, is uh, typically it's no less than 14 feet. That's, that's a typical bridge height as well. So any, any kind of a truck with a stack or any, can get underneath it. 
And in regards to that fence, while we say it's eight feet, we do have the possibility of going higher if it's requested or if the village feels it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one question that I had is, um, Will you be requesting a liquor license in this at this use? Uh, I'm not sure of that. That the owner would have to answer that question. Okay, and he's nodding. Yes, he likely would. I mean, that's something that we have allowed in gas stations. So I do bring that up. Would you be? And we we can't regulate this, but would you be a, applying for video gaming at the facility? Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other? All right. I guess I'll open it up to the board. Thank you, I appreciate it. Open up to the board for comments or questions. Um, I'm sure there's some. One comment was made about headlights glancing across adjacent <laughs> property, and I'm trying to visualize that. That is across Route 30, presumably? Mm -hmm. And there's no provision to prevent that, but traffic northbound on Gordon would do the same thing, right? Yeah, and one of the things I remember we asked for when Speedway came in was the berm out front of their building that they've installed that will yeah. block some of that or some of their landscaping. We can mitigate some of that. That's why I asked about the wall on the north side of 30, and I believe that that would go in and whenever it gets widened in five to 50 years. Um, you know, you, don't, you never know. Um, but yeah. And I'm still concerned about how close to the facility this lady's house would be that described the proximity in the common area. Yeah, I couldn't, I didn't see it in an earlier. Do you, for the petitioner, do you know how far the, the, this is from a building, from the residential building? The uh, truck fueling canopy is 250 feet to the property line on the other side of, of Adams. Okay. So, not quite a football field, but, and then, of course, the rest of the uh, complex, that's just the fueling for the, the truck area. Everything else is mm -hmm. obviously north of that. Okay. I like the use. I just don't like the location. Denny? Well, that property's been empty for 15 years since Bertrand Road's been there. Uh, I know everybody likes the idea of having open land across and they see it and they see a field and say, I always want it like that. So my kids complain and all that. But in reality, they all close down eventually. Um, I would think it would be nice on the off of 30 and until they put a wall up and they're going to put a wall up so that won't be an effect on the headlights. But until then, and I'm not sure there's some kind of berm right there now, but I would like it to have it at least four foot berm around there and the right away around that area so that lady doesn't have it come into her. Because uh, these will strictly be car lights. Uh, my son-in-law has got a 250 truck diesel and he would be on the other side. So all the cars would be lower. So where your fueling canopy is four foot would probably stop all the lights going into her place. And that fence, like you say, at eight feet, I would rather see it more like 12 so that they even have more privacy, I would think. Well, the owner's open to your suggestions. That's why we're here tonight, is to listen to you and your feedback. So if the fence is higher or if there's, in addition to the landscaping that's required by the village ordinance along 30, uh, if part of that's being a mound with landscaping, then I'm sure that's open to something we're willing to listen to. That's what we always laugh about is we made them put berms in with trees on both sides, and then you're going to put a retaining wall on, on it, or, or Route 30 is going to you know, put a wall on it. So it, there goes all your berms, all your trees. But it looks good for now until they do it. Okay. Teresa? I was actually at the plan commission meeting and um, heard the presentation, heard from many of the folks that spoke here tonight. And one of the things that was brought up is that it was actually, um, I believe the term was neighborhood commercial. Rich, is that correct? 
In the original PUD 10 or 12 years ago for Blackberry Crossing, it was identified as neighborhood commercial. There was a concept plan included in the uh, annexation agreement as, a, as an exhibit that laid out a, basically a strip center and then a bank with a drive-through on the corner, where the, basically where the gas station would be. Um, the reality is today, we're not going to see a bank with a drive-through at that location. They're closing all the time. All the so yeah. um, the property, the underlying zoning for the property is B2. So the property is being requested for a special use within the B2, which is allowable in the ordinance. Okay. Um, I did have the opportunity to speak with many of the residents after um, that portion of plan commission, and uh, we had some good conversations. I did explain to them, I do feel that we need a gas station west of Orchard Road. However, this particular, um, the footprint of this, I believe, is going to be too much of an impact on the residential areas. Um, my, my concern, I agree with uh, all of the concerns that were brought up, that I just think it's going to be too much of an impact. I think it's, it's just too much for that location. Okay. Stan? I'm, I don't have any comment at this time. Okay. Um, a couple of, a couple of the, the comments rang pretty true. The low impact zoning, which according to Director Young is, was a suggestion from 13 years ago that this does fall within the zoning permit. Um, the one that really sticks with me is the, we can fix the headlight problem. We can do all of that. We might even suggest, um, talking to the state about no engine braking because it sounds like that's happening with the semis that are gearing down and causing some additional noise. But the fumes, and I'm, and I'm not thinking of the fumes from the gas because I don't get a lot of gas smell when I fill my tank anymore. But that's a lot of cars and that's a lot of exhaust right next to these houses. Um, that's, the, that, that's the thing that concerns me more than anything is the, the impact on the residents from that perspective. Although I think many of these residents will be at Dunkin' Donuts and be at the convenience store if it's in the neighborhood. Um, it's just a concern for me is that those fumes and the impact on the neighborhood. Okay. Steve, do you have anything else? No. Okay. I got one more minute. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I don't think, I kind of agree with you that there will be, the big trucks aren't going to stop there. You're not going to have some eyes. They're, they're going to go farther down where the prices are a lot better. But you will have a lot of diesel, but diesel doesn't smell like it used to. Uh, and I live, I live over a football field from Route 30, or less than that, and I don't get any fumes. And I got 30 where there's, you know, cars, or not 30, 25. 31, that, that I don't get any fumes from that. Um, could maybe Pete or, or uh, could answer this question. Because they say they all break at the stop lights, which a lot of those big trucks do, is there any way that you think that the state would make it from, because that is a mess, especially in, if we can ever get turn lanes, I think we're talking about turn lanes before the walls. Uh, at that corner, because that's such a bad corner at 30 and Orchard. Could could we get a speed limit from like 40 miles an hour from Orchard to Gordon? Would, would the state consider that so that it's slower right in there, or, or is that just Wolf and Dixie and they're all going to drive that fast in a while? No, I think the we have the... Um ability to request a speed study from the state to consider a reduction in speed at that location. Um, so I think we do have the right to do that. Now, obviously the city doesn't control the state right state away, right but away. we can make a request for a speed study and uh, to ask them to, to uh, reduce the speed limit. So that's something we can do. So if the board would like that, we'd certainly reach out to the state um, to make that request. I'm sure they'll be a real quick to respond to us too. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, th I think when the Route 30 is eventually widened, I think it's the same speed limit as what 
The other area is going to be, I think it's 45, so that means you're going 60. So if we get 45 here, that means you're going 60. If it's 55 here, you're going 70, 75. I mean, is generally how the speed limits work. F 55 is just a... You're probably getting Chief, pulled over Chief, tomorrow. you're taking yeah. notes, right? <laughs> <laughs> You'd like okay. his license my, my, number. my vehicle has a stand bond for county clerk sticker on it. <laughs> so uh, just a couple of comments that I would make back on point is um, this. So U.S. Route 30 is, is a major thoroughfare running through Montgomery. Uh, as the engineer pointed out, this is uh, like a strategic or arterial route. So we have very limited access points to Route 30, um, Gordon Road being one of those. And I think that it's... It's common knowledge that there will be some commercial, hopefully, I mean, we all would love some commercial development at this corner uh, that would access Gordon Road. It, it would be best if it accessed Adam Avenue and hopefully a ride in, ride out to, to US Route 30. But at the same time, I feel like in four acres, we were able to fit a gas station, a Dunkin' Donuts, a car wash, and a diesel uh, and a liquor license with video gaming. So to me, this is less of a convenience store stop, kind of like the uh, 7-Eleven model or whatnot, and, and it's more of a truck stop. And we can say that the pricing, you know, trucks probably aren't going to want to stop here, and that, that may or may not be true. And if it really was entirely true, then the diesel portion of it would, would really be moot uh, because the, you guys would feel like they weren't stopping there. So I feel like there's a lot jammed in uh, to, to a four, I mean, it's a four-acre site. It's, uh, it's definitely probably the highest intense use that you could put on the property with all of that jammed in one, one site. You know, the wall would help, um, or the fence, or, or whatever we're calling it, with heavy landscaping. I get that, but I just feel like um, no matter what size wall that you put in and whether there's a wall on this side, it is, it is a very intense use at that corner. And, and I do... I, I actually do side with the with the residents that the residents south of this would be impacted by that. Um, the other plans that were shown on this, you know, it really in a different life. Uh, before the downturn, you'd be staring at the back of a building instead of that wall. And so it's it's good to think of that when we're talking about this. There could be a drive aisle behind a building at some point, and it wouldn't be as as well landscaped. And so, well, I don't want to. I don't think we should outright say no to the petitioner because of this. Uh, but if there are some things that they're willing to to um, you know tweak on the plan, or if they're and I, I don't even want to get into the f us asking them whether or not to you know disband one of the uses or the diesel. If you're saying the diesel is not a huge user on the site, then you know is that something that is needed for your project to move forward? I don't, I can't answer that, uh, and certainly wouldn't dictate that. Uh, but I think the residents have have brought up a, a valid concern that. Uh, um, north and south side. Now I know on the north side you have uh, a major highway running behind your house, and this is across from that. And some at some point there will be a wall there. Uh, so to my I guess my understanding is I'm I'm a little bit less concerned about the north side of the road and what the uh, residents on the south side, uh, you know, adjacent to the truck stop would be would be impacted. So those are my thoughts. Any other comments from anybody? I guess one of my other concerns, two of my other concerns, are at 30 and Gordon, right now we hear from residents whenever there's an accident at that intersection. Fairfield and Foxmoor is essentially held hostage because there's only one way in, one way out. And at some point in a future meeting, I'm going to discuss infrastructure funds and trying to find another way in and out of Fairfield and Foxmoor. But I think that this use, especially as intense as it is, lends itself to the possibility of more accidents at that location. The other point is that <clears throat> we've got four acres right now that are going into those detention basins. I know that we've got residents here that are interested in another topic that we're going to be discussing later. Where is that water going? And can the detention basins that handle that accept the increased volume from these outlots? So the short answer is yes. The, the original subdivision design included 
stormwater volume for this commercial area. Okay. I got another question. How important, uh, I agree with you with the diesel and the fuel, because I've been to gas stations, I've pulled up like in Wisconsin, and I go inside, pay the bill, come back out, and I'm sitting where a green pump is, which is diesel, and I'm going, ah, I got the wrong one, because they're right next to each other. I can see them separating those, okay, for that reason. But how important is, and I, I still think you won't have many trucks because Speedway and, and the, the guy, uh, the guy uh, I'm down farther does a big truck business and, and I think they give the discounts that Orchard you really shop. don't want. Uh, but how important is that diesel to you? I can see it with a couple small for, for like my son-in-law with a truck. Uh, or somebody with a uh, cart, maybe a landscaper, uh, but. Well, the, um, okay, well, I guess the short answer is that the diesel is, is very important. There's a lot of diesel vehicles, cars, pickup trucks, delivery trucks, a lot on the street, okay? Um, the, 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 the big thing to me Okay, I guess everybody's concern is tractor trailers. Okay, if we just kind of get to it. If we look at the, the percentage of tractor trailers to the overall vehicle count, you, you might be one or two percent. That, that's how many there, there are. Um, <clears throat> but to, to put a tractor, now we're gonna have diesel, Okay, now we have diesel up on, uh, up on the auto lanes, and now the tractor trailer pulls up with the cars on the auto lanes. It's a nightmare. Not good for anybody. Okay, here they come in the back. They're out of the way. Um, it's we, we have other locations that are on the neighbors. Okay, they were. Um, to me, I, I, it, to me, they're quiet. You know, the, there's, there's a buffer between us. We're hundreds of feet away. Um, it's, it, 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 you know, it, it, if there's already a problem, which they're talking about the, 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 uh, the braking on and playing the stoplight on, you know, that's, you're going to have more noise out of that than, the best thing to do is just just go out and sit at some of our stores and sit there and see what you think and see how many tractor trailers come out of there and what, what the traffic flow is and, and, and how, it, how noisy it is and what the lights are and, and you know you can make your own opinion firsthand instead of trying to guess at it and start I, I'm really not up for let's chop this let's chop this let's do that uh, Does 126 I, have diesel? 126 has diesel. Are you done, Dan? You done? My question for you: the so this is the revised plan. The other stores are they? Is it typically what the old plan was? I, I'm just trying to see: is is it the same um, layout at now, typical, most of the stores? The typical store is. Um, okay, it's the same with the, you know, the, the C store, the, ga the, the gas, and the car wash, and then the, uh, the the diesel fueling. They come in and keep going east, and then go down that uh, ring road or side road, whatever you call that. Okay, so then they they go through and then right out back on Route 30. Okay, so the diesel is typically at the back. Or the it's always back like end. this. Okay. But they go, they go around the car wash and go back out on the street. Okay, thank you. We, we don't have one that there's a side street on the side, or okay. south, you know, south mm -hmm. there. Okay. Yeah, and I should. It's worth noting that I, I don't think that um, where I said I wouldn't deny your per, your uh, application solely based on the 
intersection, because that intersection <coughs> might need some work. I don't think this is going to um, create more traffic. I think the traffic's there, and it might have its issues. Uh, and it does, but there's a, f Gordon's a four, looks like at least a four lane road and 30 will be, you know, wider than that. So I wouldn't deny you based on that. That's, that's uh, for sure in this situation. As you generally hear, we're, we're not a traffic generator. We're not sucking, you know, people t three miles away to, to, to come there. I mean, there might be some that might want to mm -hmm. come over and wash their car or something, but we're feeding off the uh, existing traffic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the one point that I'll make for the residents that are here is that for, just so you understand the struggle that we're up against uh, as the board here, we, we really want to bring development to Montgomery. We, this will improve um, the tax base on this lot specifically. Um, and that's really what enables us to do things like freeze your property taxes for five years in a row now. And so that's the struggle that we're up against. Uh, we, you know, we need, uh, and we all want additional places to to shop and eat in that. And so we're we're really trying to work with development um, uh, and also the sales tax that would be generated and the motor fuel tax that's generated at a site like this. Uh, so I think if there's a way for us to mitigate the impact to the community, um, you know, it's not an outright denial of this. Um, but but right now I think it's re it's very intense. It's a very intense uh, four acre plot of land. Like a motion to accept the Planning Commission's recommendation. And so this is just the recommendation, so it's non binding, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Zach. Explain that a little bit clearer for the public, please, Matt. Yeah, what that so, means. so uh, Planning Commission makes a recommendation to us on the petition, and the first item that we always have is to accept their recommendation which there's been times before where we accept the recommendation and then deny the permit or the special use anyway. Um, so I don't know how the vote's gonna go tonight, but it's really non-binding. Um, there's no ordinance to follow this up, which would be the uh, actual uh, approving the, the development. Uh, but I think in this situation, we didn't bring that because we weren't sure how the board was going to, to vote on the petition. And so before we, I guess, after we take the vote on this, we'll kind of summarize what, what the next steps could be for this project. And to clarify, the Planning Commission's recommendation was against this use. So us accepting that is really just accepting their recommendation. It, like you said, it's non-binding, but their recommendation was against this. So, and the way we do it so that nobody gets confused usually is they made a recommendation to approve that failed. And so our recommendation to accept would be, an, would be to approve, I guess, let's just say. It really is non-binding, but let's do it that way because that's... So a yes vote means you want the project, a no vote, not necessarily, I guess. No, yeah. you're, you're just yeah. accepting their recommendation. What I'm trying to get at is it'd be really great if there was a consensus or at least the petitioner knew where the board sat after this vote. Um, Could we go at it? I, my in impression is that we are agreeing that the plan commission followed the sure. proper process. Right. Correct. We can do that. And then can we have like a straw poll afterwards? Saying they made a recommendation. That's fine. We're taking it in. Yeah. Okay. Whether you yeah. agree with it or not. You're yeah, just... accepting the recommendation more or less just acknowledges that the meeting was held, that the public hearing was held, and that those are the findings that the plan commissioners made, but it no way binds this board mm -hmm. to make those same findings or to follow anything that was said there. Okay. Is anybody more confused after that? <laughs> this, this is a strange way we have to do so these this, things. So this uh, doesn't really matter, as it turns so. out. So there's been a motion and a, and a second. So this is a motion to accept the recommendation. Call the roll. Trustee Marisak? Yes. Trustee Bond? Yes. Trustee Sperling? Yes. Trustee Lee? Yes. And Trustee Youngerman? Yes. Now you want See? a straw poll? Now I'd like, yeah, I think it would be great for the petitioner yeah, to get a, get a, uh, the opinion of the board on where you would sit. If the ordinance was in front of you tonight, would you be voting for it? Uh, what are some of your, what's your biggest concern I'm with that? No. I'm a no. Okay. I'm a no. I'm conflicted. We just had an earlier discussion where the use of the land was not to be a factor, and that appears to be exactly what's happening in this instance. No, the, the use of the land was, a, was the only reason we could deny that one. This, we, we were talking about the specific business, the user of the land. This is a gas station, and this is different because it's, well, I'm not doing a good job of summarizing that. <laughs> Uh, but this is a land use application. We're not denying it because there is a gas station next to it. 
the gas station could potentially impact residential properties to the south? Well, no, no one has demonstrated that. I, I, I really see a parallel because there's been no expert testimony that it will or will not affect sure. adjacent property values or that it presents a health hazard. But I'm hearing a lot of people who are deeply concerned about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not through listening, I think, is where I'm at with it. Okay. I'm an L. I've tried to fix the few problems that was there. I know it isn't to the house being closest to, but I'm right next to a railroad track. I bought the house when I knew that property was going to be there. This was set vacant 15 years, and I'd probably vote for yes. Okay. Everybody? So we got a no, no, conflicted? Three, no. three one yes. Okay. So I think at this point, it's a pretty safe consensus. Uh, very intense use. If the petitioner was able to uh, make some revisions, we could consider that. But at, at this point, it doesn't appear that the board would be in, in favor of approving this land use plan that we currently have. And I do appreciate everybody coming and, and hearing this tonight. The rule is if you've been here for more than two hours, you have to stay for the whole meeting. <laughs> The doors are locked. You know what? Why don't we take five minutes? Thank you. <coughs> This is a letter of credit reduction proposed for Marquee Point Unit 1. Uh, the letter of credit that's on file at this time is for, I'm sorry, $212,785. Uh, this letter of credit reduction would reduce that by $39,391. So the remaining letter of credit for the completion 